of the day for me is going to be a play on the Orioles team total over five and a half runs for minus 125. This is squarely fading Adam Wainwright, the starting pitcher for the Cardinals today. This guy's not been good. He's had a great career, but over his last few, he's been downright terrible. 0-10 over his last 11 starts with a 10-7-2 ERA. And let's talk about the matchup here because the Orioles offense has been red hot. Second best batting average in all of baseball over the last month. And they've also hit this number in eight of their last 10 games. In fact, when they score runs, they score a lot of runs. Double digit runs in four of their last five games. These games have been scoring fast. So I think the over is also worth a look as well. But let's single out the Orioles offense because Adam Wainwright by himself has given up at least six runs in four of his last six starts. So even if he only gives up four here, I think the Orioles can do some damage when it comes to that Cardinals bullpen. So Orioles team total over five and a half runs for minus 125. Oh, the day. Well, mine is Orioles first five run line for the same reasons is what I'm trying to say here. Mm -hmm. Come on. Let's go. Minus 140. It's worth the juice. I'm getting juicy today. You mentioned Adam Wainwright. He's just awful. He's just awful. That's all there is to it. His ERA in August was over 10. Orioles are a top five team in Major League Baseball in the first five. Even if John Means, who is making his first start in 22 months for the O's struggles, I just don't think it matters here because Wainwright is so bad. Orioles first five run line. Minus 140. Let's get it. Has right. like a couple good teams. You know, that is the national narrative surrounding the ACC right now. I know Caleb Williams is going to put up massive numbers. We know he will in that offense, but I don't think I'm interested in taking him at only four to one. It feels like there are too many people who can actually win this award. That's are it. you interested in Caleb Williams? Because, like, I think there's a good chance that he wins. It's just not the price that I like. Like, he's going to be tired by the end of the season. Neither of these guys is going to win the Heisman Trophy. And it's not disrespectful. It's just that the hype train has gone way, way too far down the tracks. You're absolutely right. Especially in college football. You got to win. And you have to win a lot to win the Heisman Trophy. And Colorado, who has absolutely 1,000% outperformed expectations, really hasn't played anyone. TCU lost all a ton of people from last year's team that ended up making the national championship game. Coming up for Colorado after Colorado State, who was terrible this year. So they're opening with three terrible teams. Then they go to number 13, Oregon. They host number five, USC. A couple weeks later, they go to number 24, UCLA. Then they host number 16, Oregon State. Then two weeks later, they go to number 23, Washington State. Then they go to number 12, Utah. Oddly enough, the, the Pac-12, which is about to break up, pretty good this year. I know it's early on. A lot of talented teams. When they get into the meat of that schedule, we will not see – we might see some great performances, but Colorado will lose some games. Oh. I like your first impression, Roses. We should make this a segment, oh. Chelsea. We should absolutely do that. I will say another game very quickly that does interest me is Giants laying four and a half. I know money is coming on the Cardinals, but I think this is an – I'm looking for overreaction spots in week two, mm -hmm. and I think the Cardinals are a bad football team. They're a dirty football team. <laughs> I don't know how many headshots they took against Sam Howell and the Commanders. It was flag after flag after flag in the first half. They were playing dirty football. The Cardinals are still a bad football team. The Giants are definitely better than what we saw against the Cowboys. I know money is going to come in on Arizona. Again, another overreaction spot. I think the Giants can go into Arizona and win this game. Need to do a little bit more research because I don't feel great about it. But early on, I think this is some time when you can take advantage of some early spots where people are just giving way too much credit or not enough credit based on what we saw in week one. I felt like the Bills almost felt like they were going to win that game pretty easily, mm -hmm. so they kind of took their foot off the gas pedal. I'm wondering if it was more of a back-and-forth affair if he would have uh, rushed for more yards because it's crazy how one player being out for one side can be like a butterfly effect for the rest yeah. of the game. But, um, 
Uh, that's another danger of betting on player props. But back to this game. Maybe there's some player props worth playing. I know I just complained about all the bad beats in player props, uh, but we've seen one thing from the Vikings. The only guy you can trust is Justin Jefferson, but he has to go against a very good secondary in the Philadelphia Eagles. Uh, I don't think I'm willing to like take an under on Justin Jefferson anytime soon because the target share is definitely going to be there, but maybe an under on Kirk Cousins. Like We know we can put up some yards. Maybe mm-hmm. the number will be a little inflated for this one. Uh, so that or maybe a Kirk Cousins interception. He didn't look that good in the first game of the season. But again, I think seven's too high for me. Like the Eagles didn't look like they were dominating. Like they did when they were up 16 nothing, uh, And then they let the, the Patriots come back. So I think seven's not a number I want to play. I watch a lot of Law & Order. And there was some kid that got murdered, right? And so the two oh, invest, God. well, that was not the funny part. So this kid dies. And I mean, we could not believe it. Didn't even reach 10, <laughs> dead, buried. No. So the two, the two detectives were asking other kids about who might've been responsible for like this nine year old's death. Right. And so they're talking to this one kid and say some to the effect of, so this friend of yours did, was he around the, the kid that died? And he goes, no, no, no. He just, you know, I mean, he, he was supposed to be home at 530, but, but he stayed home. He stayed at my place for an extra hour because he likes video games. And the detective goes, oh, he doesn't like playing by the rules. <laughs> like, what? This kid's going to be charged for, with murder because he doesn't play by the rules? They stayed an extra hour to play video games? Does he always do stuff like this? You think he's capable of murdering someone? It was so ridiculous. <laughs> so when I hear someone, like, oh, you don't play by the rules? Yes. Oh, Super well, painful. what are you, a murderer? Is that what you're doing? No. Staying a little late when you're supposed to be home early? Do you kill somebody? You don't play by the rules? Playing an athlete on a movie or a TV show, and they get the most unathletic person available. Like, I'm sure yes. you've seen, like, the gif floating around of the guy that played a quarterback oh, in, like, the, high the school or whatever. Football? Yeah, that's the best one. Like, who taught him that throwing motion? Like, anytime a quarterback is terrible in the NFL, somebody tweets that and says, this guy today. And he's like, huh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. That's a that's a very, very good one as well. I remember that. Uh, I could go on and on about bad TV shows and even the remake of Little Mermaid that I watched this weekend, which I'm still getting over. Oh. But I will not go into that again. I told Catherine that I talked about it on the air. A lovely Catherine. She goes, "What did you say about the Little Mermaid?" I said, Uh-oh. "It was." I said, "It was a very speedy two hours and twenty minutes." <laughs> That's what I said. I said it was a very, very quick hundred and forty minutes. Boy, did I love it! And I was singing it on the air. She didn't understand how I was singing it, but I was singing. What's it called? What's that song? Part of Their World. Oh, yeah, that one. That Part banger. of Their oh, World. God, kill me. Almost made me want to listen to Taylor Swift. I'm like, you know what? Turn up the TS. I about had it with this mermaid character. I get it. I get it. You want to be human. 